First you take the grouse, you clean your grouse, got your duck, you clean your duck, and you jam it inside the duck, jam it inside the duck. <laughs> I'm Zachary Fowler, and that's the Wooded Beardsman, and this is Season 4 of the Wilderness Living Challenge. Yeah! The goal of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods. So last October, I headed up to the backwoods of Canada to meet up with the Wooded Beardsman and do just that for seven days. Last time on Wilderness Living Challenge Season 4, we pack up our first camp and paddle up the river deeper into the wilds of Canada, seeking to harvest more food along the way and survive off the wild game we've already harvested up to this point. Cut all of the sticks so they approximately be flat with the ground and it makes a bench. So we can sit somewhere nice by the fire and pluck the birds. Cheers. Cheers. And now, day four of Seven Day Wilderness Living Challenge. Good morning. I've been awake for like an hour just laying here. I feel sick thinking about beaver and bear fat stew. And we got ducks. I don't want to waste anything. I feel like I've been eating a little bit less every day. It's like it, that's so much more and more filling. I don't really need as much with all that fat. And, uh, yeah, I think we're going to head up and down the river and get some more ducks. <sighs> Looking to preserving the food that we do have here at our new camp. Let's see what else I can't find around here to build to make my little camp more comfortable. A little bit of a headache. Only thing that's going to solve that is getting up and getting going. Getting some liquids and getting some coffee. Let's get this day going. Looks like an early bird beat me to the worm. He's already down here, posted up. Did you see anything? I wasn't set up in time. You I heard one fly right over here so I thought I'd sit up on this side watch them come up the uh, channel here oh oh here's some geese Had to move it. Yeah. Smoke's going that way. <laughs> Can 
I'm like a bucket of coffee for breakfast. <laughs> it's it's just a regular cup of coffee inside of there, but I have so much other junk I'm toting around with me. I'm trying to be like a minimalist with the uh, my pots and coffee cups and all that stuff. You know, uh, Chris he he goes all out in another direction. You can see here his uh his pot and pan collection. He's got quite the pot and pan collection for all the stuff. And uh, so we pretty much have the same amount of gear except for mine is all the extra cameras beyond his. I have three more cameras than he has, the, the drone and, the, and then the charging system for all of that and the solar panel that rolls out. Beautiful cool morning to sit by the fire for a little bit. Read my waterproof bible. What do you think? You guys give up or you're thirsty for more? Are they hungry? I think it's time to invite the community because we can't eat this anymore. <laughs> That's not a good sign, let me tell you that. It's nasty. <laughs> Finally, we've reached our limit on beaver stew. Yeah. But, uh, are you, why? You just oh don't... yeah, I, I told my camera. You want the whole story? Yeah. So last night, here let me cover this back up. Last night, I uh, felt really sick and I woke up. I was trying to hold it down and I woke up. I'm like, I gotta go walk and see what happens. So I ended up walking around a little bit and I was dry heaving a little bit and I find a spot for myself and kind of curl up in a ball. Uh, crouched over and uh, nothing happened. And then I, you know, came out the other end. And I felt, right, oh, that's good. Maybe that was the problem. So it was, you know, I, I don't know how much is TMI for your audience, right? It was a squirt anyway. <laughs> I squirted a bit, it was, it was tarry, it was black. But, that, but I had a good one the other day, so I thought I was all good. Anyway, got that out, I felt a little bit better, and then I got the shivers, and I'm like, this actually feels good just to shiver in the cold. So I think I just had to burn some calories off. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll try to throw up a little bit, because my stomach was like huge from eating all that stuff last night. So I threw up a little bit. Yeah. About a handful, and I'm like, that's good. And I went back to bed, and everything was good fine after that, so. You felt good when you slept? Yeah, I felt fine after I slept. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, after I threw up a little bit, just a handful. And does it, so you're hungry for it now? I, I'm not hungry. <laughs> no. I don't know, it's hard to say if I'm hungry for it now. I'm not hungry right now. I, still the thought of eating, I, I didn't throw up, but I felt like for the last three hours before I got out of bed, I felt a little nauseous, like, yeah. like motion sickness. Zach says he's not feeling too well. He's not a, he's not a boatsman, he's a boat builder, but he's not too... No, I'm not all about canoes and stuff. Yeah? Not yeah, I've done plenty of canoe trips and things, so I've never, I don't know. Just not feeling well. I just, yeah, I feel a little, a little hinky. Not bad, but just like a little. Just a, like a, like a 5%, just enough that like, you know what, I don't feel like eating. Um, doesn't make me feel like I'm lagging or anything. I feel, body-wise, I feel strong, Yeah, I right? feel fine. I feel 100% I feel... like I can do physical activity. I don't yeah. feel ill. Like, yeah. I don't feel weak. I just feel. No, not at all. Not hungry. Like, overly full, like you, you eat a, not like you ate a turkey dinner and you want to take a nap, but like, I don't yeah. know, like satiated, like so yeah. satiated that I'm like yeah, just, all set. And I, I think that a lot of people get carried away with like, oh, it's it's meal time, let's let's eat breakfast, you know, and oh, okay, it's uh, lunchtime, let's eat, you know. But like, maybe when you're eating the right foods and you eat enough of it, you know, you don't need to overeat. You can yeah. you can eat enough of it, satiated. You go and burn it off. We'll go paddle or we'll go hike and look for grouse. We'll burn it off and we'll come back with an actual appetite yeah. and eat again kind of thing. I think last night, probably what I did was I forced it. Yeah. You know when I said like, my last bite of applesauce and I just ate it? Yeah, I, I feel like I could have. did me in. It was just too much. I put as much on my, I ate as what was on my plate. I did the whole like plate clearing thing. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's a bad thing to do. You know, it's like, you know, we're always wanting to do that to our kids. Like, you, oh, I put that on your plate. You got to eat it. Yeah. No, but like, it, you need to eat what you need to eat and then you'd be done with it and say enough's enough if you want to uh you know maintain a healthy weight and not overeat yeah so that's and, where we're at on yeah. the wilderness living challenge yeah. we're we're excessive to the point of gluttonous yeah you gotta just tone it back a little bit and listen to what our body tells us but as far as i know that we've been like that from the beginning and i was still as of yesterday i had lost you know like three pounds so let's see how it goes towards the end we still got a, what five more days 
Yeah, five whatever five, you five do. more days, or if we maybe if we start keep having so much fun out here, we'll just stay out here forever. Yep. You'll never see us again. We'll never post these videos, and we'll just be out here somewhere, lost in the wild of Canada. Somebody will find this card and edit it all together for us. Yeah. Uh, that, this will be like the, like they fly, find the old information. Like, they never came back. You know. <laughs> what was that? Uh, Jeremiah Johnson. He's still up there in the mountains. You know, like the myth. <laughs> But it's nice to see so much wildlife, you know? You go to other places and you don't see anything. We're this far out here, we're seeing all kinds of wildlife. I don't know, and the list of things that we've seen since we've been here, we saw a moose, we didn't you know, just get it on camera, it was coming up and out of the river a couple of days ago, and we even saw the hind quarters of a lynx going into the bushes, and it was like, oh wow! Neither of us had ever seen that before in person. That was awesome. Lots of wildlife. Alright, let's see. Two bars, see if we can get some more juice in there so I can charge my stuff. And I'm gonna head on over to my little site here. I just saw something. What is that? I didn't notice this last night when I was setting up. There's my little spot. Oh, hammocking up in here, all nice and cozy. But I just seen something up here. There's some. What is that? Some ribbon out here in the woods. What in the world? Oh, there's a giant pit. Wow, there's a big old pit down there. That's like, I don't know, like eight feet deep. I wonder how deep the water is underneath of there. That's kind of creepy. Must be like a mining test hole or something. I'm camped just over the hill from this creepy hole, like something from the ring. I hate horror movies, don't watch horror movies, but I think I watched The Ring. Ugh, stuff crawling out of wells. That's gross. I'm gonna picture that tonight while I'm in my bag. I hear noises out here, something crawling up out of here coming after me in the night. Ugh. Why did I have to think about that? Now I got the willies. I gotta explore some more so I know what it's here for so I don't think about stuff like that. Yikes. <clears throat> Gonna be thinking about zombie mooses coming out of there all ticked off that they fell in a hole, man-made hole. My dad told me a story about when he was a kid. He watched uh, Deliverance. And he was afraid to go in the woods for like a month. And before I went to Patagonia for 87 days surviving out there, uh, I watched a Sasquatch, a scary Sasquatch movie. And uh, huh, I had some nightmares out there. You hear the thumping on the trees. Uh, I don't know what it was. And there wasn't supposed to be anybody in any of those directions. And I heard thumping in the woods. And you hear the mountains crumbling all the time, and you hear ro rocks coming off the tops of the mountains out there. But, but the thumping was just a bit unnerving. And I don't know. I like to think it was a woodpecker. I kept telling myself it was a woodpecker, but there was this weird thumping that was so consistent. And then it would stop for a while, and it didn't sound like a woodpecker I've ever heard to thump on something so big and make such a big bang and such a big racket. Sounded more like a big four or eight inch log being smashed against a giant tree with lots of force. And that Sasquatch movie where they got, it was one of those stupid movies where it was all put together by a supposed camera that was found in the woods by other hikers and they brought it back and made the movie. And Oh, that gave me some nightmares out there sometimes. 
not what you need when you're out there alone. So I don't recommend watching scary movies. Not fun. All right, so we're making grouse ducking. Since we don't have a stuff to make a bushcrafter ducking fully, it's just gonna be a two bird grouse ducking. I'm gonna take the grouse, jam it inside the duck. <laughs> Sounds so funny. First you take the grouse, you clean your grouse, got your duck, you clean your duck, and you jam it inside the duck, and then I'm gonna cook it over the fire to burn off the little bit of duff on her that we haven't gotten off completely. It was a hard pluck, this one. But uh, she's ready to go, and I'm gonna use some of Chris's adobo as my seasoning spice for all of this. Let's get to it. I'm hoping that this will bring back my appetite by cooking something, the smell of juices and things like that. It's coming up on noontime here and I'm still not even all that hungry. But this will be different than eating a beaver. So hopefully that uh, brings back that powerful appetite I always have. <laughs> And she's in. Dobo on the outside of the duck. All right, so Chris hasn't seen this part. This is the secret part of my secret recipe for my grouse ducking, is I got a big old hunk of bear fat. So it's almost a grouse bear ducking, I guess. I'm gonna jam that in there so it gets in, gets uh, as it melts down and while it's cooking, it it's like putting butter inside of a burger and making a really juicy burger that way. Just ugh, get it in there. This isn't creepy or weird at all, is it? Just pack that duck grousing with uh, some bear fat. I'm gonna tie the legs here on her clothes so she doesn't fall apart. Get in there. Get in there, you grousing. Ugh. She fits, just barely. Oh, all right, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna put them on my roasting stick. I'm gonna try and roast it till uh, dinner time. So I got a stick and I used a little Y down here. That'll mean that uh, it keeps the bird from slipping around once it's in here. And that way I can rotate it without it flopping one way versus the other. Stick went right through, come on. Come on, duck grousing. There it comes. Boom! Nailed it. I think I want it like, like so. Oh yeah. All right. What do you think? This is a good idea or a bad idea? My bird is on. Got my adjustable sticks here and here so I can raise and lower it at different levels and bring it closer or further from the fire. I got high hopes for this being like the most delicious grouse ducking ever made. Gotta get some meat on here. Right? Fun to meat. So we got all this meat. Now we're gonna find a way to store it. We're gonna pick what we're gonna actually believe we'll eat and then make some refrigeration for the rest. So, there's our moss. I'll cover that up. People used to make freezers and ice chests like this for a very, very long time. They just didn't have the benefit of the plastic. There we go, that pretty much does it. Nice little in-ground refrigerator. 
now we can feel secure that our meat will be safe. We won't be wasting anything. Check it out. Let's see if there's any growth. Yeah. Well, there's. Yeah, I'll, I'll go that way. You go that way, and we'll see uh, what we get. Come back in half an hour. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll walk for like 20 minutes and then turn around, and come back. Okay. I don't have a watch. Well, we'll just guess. Okay. You know. Good. Yep. All right, splitting up the team to cover more ground. Increase our odds of actually getting a grouse, or at least increase my odds of getting a grouse. He's always out in front, taking all the shots of the ducks. And uh, admittedly, he has a better shot, so it's just better. We're working on this teamwork, so that's all right. It's no big deal. If I go this way by myself, maybe I can get another grouse with a slingshot if there's a, a good advantage and if he's too far off. I won't risk it, and I'll just use the shotgun. Look at that big old moose track. Down this uh, slightly rougher trail, there's another one. I uh, trail split back there for the four wheelers who've been going a bunch, and so I took the one less traveled. And uh, so far it hasn't paid off, no grouse. And lots of sticks to climb over. That's probably why they haven't been out this way lately. And the moose isn't the only thing that's out here. We've got some wolf tracks. Right there. Not the only one out here, even though it feels like it. What a beautiful place. I haven't heard anything from Chris's direction, so I'm guessing he hasn't had any better luck. Oh man, would you look at that. I wish I could take that home with me. The perfect giant slingshot. I want to build a giant slingshot for a video at home. No luck? No luck? You hear something out here? Yeah, gross right. drumming in here so we can do a little bit of bushwhack and see if we can get one. All right. Nice. Another grouse. There we go. That's the one we heard drumming probably. Probably, yeah. There we go. Hey, see, it takes two. I, I saw it. <laughs> you And you heard it to made us go in the direction we thought it might be. Tag team. Tag team. Beauty. All right, just jam him in there. We'll clean up the mess another time. No, there we go, perfect. To, one bird. Try not to make a mess. No worries. That's what the satchel's for. Did you get the other one? No, no, just the one that you got. Let's go back and cook this puppy. All right, so if you're wondering how we have water, we got a platypus. You fill up that bag with dirty water, and I'll show you when we get up to the camp. If hook it up to a filter, and it runs into a clean one. So we just pushed off the shore, get the water over out here instead of the swampy water close to land. All right, so we got our platypus here with the dirty water and we just barely hooked it up it's already running down through the filter into the clean bag and filled that much water purified and when you're done you simply unhook this here and that's what you use to fill your water bottles and just there's your close off valve open it up fill your bottle or your pot your cook pot whatever close it off again let's see how the grouse duck in is doing Ooh, not too bad a little bit on that side cooked, but we weren't here to tend the fire, so 
it uh, still needs a lot of work. <laughs> uh, saw. Saw. There we go, nice and close to the fire. That should do. Ooh, doesn't that just look delicious? But it's bear meat, so we don't want to be eating it when it's pink and rare. We gotta make sure it's fully cooked through. Because with bear meat, you can get trichinosis. So you gotta make sure it's cooked fully through. Some wadobo. That's the good stuff right there, bring out the flavor. All right, it's done. Look at that. Oh, right there, look at that. Doesn't that just look delicious, cooked in bear fat? That is so good. That adobo. Yeah. Wadobo. Wadobo. Wadobo is a brand. Wadobo is my brand. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. What do you think? It's good, fresh. Oh, it's good, fresh. Like the, the one that we stewed in the pot the first night was so tough compared to this. This is the way to win, right here. We're frying it right up in the bear fat. Mmm. Fresh grows and bear fat. Could be dark. And with Dobo. Alright, she's done. Been cooking for about six hours. Let's see how I did. If it comes apart. If it's cooked all the way through. Oh, look at that. Yep, there we go. Grouse ducking. Looks like it's cooked through. I'm seeing, uh, you know, the meat comes right off the grouse. So, it's juicy. It's actually, it's actually pretty juicy. It melts in your mouth. Um, maybe that has a lot to do with that, look at that big old chunk of bear fat right there, still hanging out inside. It's been melting and, and dissolving its, uh, fatty goodness into the, into the meats. And, um, the grouse actually is really good with the, uh, wadobo spice on it. Let's try the duck. Duck's a bit on the dry side. It's not coming apart all that great, but a little duck leg. Not too shabby. Grouse ducking. Feels like it's missing something. Like being wrapped in bacon would probably. Bacon wrapped grouse ducking. Now that would be awesome. Next time on Fowler's Makery Mischief. Bacon wrapped grouse ducking. But it's pretty awesome. Grouse I got with my slingshot. 
Hey Chris, you wanna give it a try? Yeah man. <laughs> just like that? Yeah, just like that. <laughs> just grab onto the spit there and... Which would you recommend, the grouse or the duck in? Actually, the grouse is probably the better of the two. It, if it needed some more wadobo or something, because it kind of got rubbed off or something. But <laughs> because of the bear fat, it... It smells good. It well, cooked, it cooked good. That's fine. That's yeah. good. Yeah, it's, not, it's nothing to write home about, right? I mean, it's like... That's edible. It's, it's more than edible. But... So, it's a spit roast, right? It's always a challenge to spit roast everything. Yeah. Um, like the did you do a leg? The turkey, yeah, grab it, rip it right off. The turkey I did last year over the fire. Here, you hold that. <sighs> there you go. All right. Turkeys seem to do well over the fire. Well, like, you can eat it. Yeah, you can eat it. I don't know that. Just end up a little on the chewy side, but. It's always chewy when you spit roast. Yeah. Oh no, that turkey I did over the fire. Turkeys, they. Well, they inject it with butter. I didn't inject it with butter. Did, did, I roasted it, it for was it like, a was it a butter ball? Turkey? They inject oh, the, they are really? they, yeah, they stick a lot of fat in there. And no, no, mine was a organically raised, farm raised turkey. And I did it over the fire and I actually never even put any butter pads onto it. It's just nice. slow. But they're fattier, even if they're organic and all that stuff. They're a fattier bird than a wild bird, so there's always a there's always that, right? Mm. People don't maybe you guys don't take into account when you so you should spit where those things that, that the wild animals are very, very lean to start with. Yeah, you you if you end up with something even edible after spit roasting a wild animal, then yeah. then you're actually doing okay, I think, right? Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, we're dope. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think I just had some shot or something. Next time on Wilderness Living Challenge Season 4, we head up the river to the lake and do some exploring trying our hand at some fishing and find something we never would have expected to find this far out. Oh my goodness. Looks like a palace. Like something from a Stephen King movie. I mean, got a cup. Yeah. This is like the perfect place to film a horror movie. Look right up. I'm going to take that for a little bit of snuggle warmth until I'm all warmed up and cozy in my my hammock. I'm all buttoned in. Woo! Uh, happy Rock is right under my butt. Nice and warm, I can feel it. <laughs> it's working already. It's working already, that's nice. That's it for me today. Tomorrow we have more adventures. Check out Chris's channel, link below and here at the end in one of these corners here, here or here or here or here. And we will have a big adventure tomorrow, as always. Gonna get up bright and early for some duck hunting. Hopefully we get some new ducks. That's it. Ah, I already said that. That's it for me. Thanks for watching, guys. Battery's dying. Fowler out.